not just industry-wise that I feel like you were making these decisions because around 2000, you were diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. Yeah. And you waited till 2013 to share it publicly. So it's a large chunk of time where you were just working yeah. and grinding yeah. and dealing with this yeah. and people didn't even know. So what were the symptoms and, and, and what made you decide to keep it close to the vest as opposed to sharing it at that time? Like around 99, I, I, I was, I would, take showers and I would just like lose feeling in my whole right arm like I couldn't mm. even lift it I thought I had a pinched nerve because I was in the gym a little bit mm. working out and stuff like that so I thought I had a pinched nerve or whatever so you know I didn't think nothing of it and then I, a, a particular day I remember I lost vision in one of my eyes and I went to a doctor and they treated me for optic neuritis and they mm. were like you know eventually your vision will, will come back or whatever mm. and then after that happened I had another incident. This is all like leading up to 2000. The bottom of one of my feet just went completely numb. Like how, you know, if your foot falls asleep, mm -hmm. it felt like that. Mm -hmm. But it felt like that all day. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, that foot was better and the, uh, it was in the other foot. And so I thought, like, I go to the doctor. Something, ain't, something right. is weird. Like something going on. So I went to the doctor and went to Brookdale Hospital and they ran a battery of tests. Um, they, they kept me overnight, I think. Pretty sure I stayed overnight. Um, they were running a bunch of different tests, but they weren't telling me what they were thinking it was looking like because they didn't want to say anything yet. And then they did a spinal tap. That was the final test. And once they, then they came back and told me what it was. And I was just like, well, I guess this is a wrap. I guess it's over. And, you know, I thought it was a wrap. I really did. Um, I didn't know what it meant. I just knew that it wasn't, there was no cure. And I mm -hmm. knew that my quality of life going forward was probably going to be horrible. And I was in a lot of trouble. And mm -hmm. so to my wife's credit, like she had like the crazy pep talk, like, just took me out of that funk right away. Like, this ain't nothing. Like, we're going to get through this. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. She just hit me with the crazy pep talk and got, got me at least in the right mindset to, to try to fight. At that point, I just started making a lot of changes with my diet and my exercise and things like that. But in addition to that, I rededicated myself to the, the pen, to the music, and to putting together at least one more record because I really thought, this is going to be my last go. So right. I'm going to just do this one more record so that I can kind of go out on my on my terms because I felt like the Sitting on Chrome album was, if I if I, if I had ended on that, it was me going out on somebody else's terms. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go out on my terms. I'm going to do this one last record and then let the chips fall where they may. And that was Disposable Arts, which ended up being the most important album of my career. Stuck in it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow, go with it.